Hello my friends and welcome back to another Baldur's Gate 3 character building guide. Hope you're all doing well. Today I'm covering a build I'm calling the Raging Retaliator. A build that really traps your opponents between two terrible options. Either they hit you and take a whole bunch of damage from your retaliation damage, or they don't hit you and then of course you just get to hit them freely. This build both does massive melee damage and massive return damage while being able to very safely operate thanks to the incredible defensive utility that you get. It also gets to use two classes that you don't see combined very often in a very unusual combination, a combination that in my multi-class tier list I rated as niche. Well, this is the niche, and we're going to be combining Barbarian and Warlock to create a build that has all of the damage and um, tanking power of a Barbarian and all the utility and retaliation power of a Warlock wrapped into a single character. Before I begin, I would like to take a moment to say thank you so much to Horn Apocalypse for the $5 donation, uh, Recrit for the 10 euros, JAH5391 for the $20, and to Zidistra, Jimmy Bennett, and RMD for becoming channel members. Thank you so much, my friends. I really do appreciate the support very much. All right, let's jump in and start building the Raging Retaliator. I'm of course using Karlak as the example character for this build because this is a barbarian foremost build and it fits very well I think with her flavor. Um, you would of course have to find some way to justify a warlock pact uh, in her history, but other than that the, the idea of a character that is both capable of dealing massive damage and strikes back when hit We'll be using cold damage to do a lot of our retaliation, but Karlak is too hot to approach um, and so you can imagine it as the enemies being burned by the heat of her internal furnace as they get too close to her. I think that fits very well. If you want to build this character as a non-Karlak build, then you are best off uh, with the usual suspects in terms of race. Um, Wood Elf for the bonus movement speed. Because this is a retaliation melee build, the bonus movement speed is extremely powerful in, in terms of getting close to enemies. Halfling is also pretty interesting because we uh, will often want to be rolling saves. And you can concentrate on, on spells, though it's not as important for this build, obviously, since we're a barbarian. We're mostly going to be using non-concentration spells for our spells. Um... And Gnome, for the advantage on mental saves, is actually really good as well, because we will have good physical saves, but our mental saves will de might need some help. Um, so those are the usual choices that I think are going to be strong here, as they are indeed at any time. Another option is to take uh, Asmodeus Tiefling, because that gives you Hellish Rebuke as a racial spell, which is very on theme for the build, and will let you do even more retaliation damage. This character also, I think, works really well if you're playing an Origin Karlak build, because we are going to be doing a charisma-based Karlak. We're answering the question, what if Karlak was as charismatic in-game as the internet finds her? And so we are going to be able to have really excellent dialogue skills, despite being a barbarian, and so you can really intimidate your way through the game, especially because Karlak natively, due to her Zariel Tiefling origin, gets Thaumaturgy as a cantrip, giving her advantage on intimidation intimidation checks. We're going to have incredibly high intimidate checks, and so you'll be able to shout and bluster your way through the game, which I think is very appropriate for an Origin Karlac uh, playthrough. Alright, let's get in and start building the character. We'll begin with a level of Barbarian. There's two main reasons for this. One is that you get con save proficiency if you start with Barbarian, and that's always good for any character that's going to be casting it on casting and concentrating on spells. While this character won't always be concentrating on spells in combat, in fact, often you'll be raging and thus not concentrating on spells at all, it gives you a whole extra dimension of tactical options for your character if you can easily maintain concentration on spells. Um, and we will get some good ones to concentrate on as we level up, so being able to maintain concentration is really nice. The other is that we get barbarians at level 1 get 12 hit points to start with, plus uh, you can see plus 2 here from our constitution, but we'll improve that shortly, and warlocks only get 8. 4 hit points might not sound like a lot, but it really is for this character because we are going to be using so many multipliers and defensive options to multiply our hit point total that uh, through adding in damage reduction, that every single hit point we get is incredibly valuable. Each of those hit points is going to represent something like four or five incoming damage that needs to be dealt to us in order to 
for us to actually take any damage at all, thanks to our multipliers and damage reduction. And so that is going to add up to a significant survivability increase for our character before you go down and have to, um, you know, eat healing resources from your party. So both of those reasons are really good. We also get to start with um, medium armor and shield proficiency, which are very useful as well, and get martial weapons, all of which are very useful for this character. You could start with Warlock as well if you really want multiple dialogue skills, but one thing that Barbarians do get is Intimidation Proficiency anyways, and that's going to be the primary dialogue skill that we're going to want to use regardless. So we can get away with starting with Barbarian and still having great access to Intimidate as a dialogue option. For our attribute selection, we're going to do something a little bit odd looking here. And because this is going to be a charisma based character, we're going to focus on charisma and constitution and leave our strength low. That will allow us to use Pact of the Blade Warlock to do charisma based barbarian attacks, which are going to be really nice and give us also high DCs for our save saving throws that have uh, save DCs associated while giving us high dialogue skills as well. We're going to take a pretty standard attribute split here with 16 Charisma. Um, standard for not a Barbarian, but standard for a Warlock. And uh, it's also worth mentioning that this character will benefit extremely heavily from getting Ethel's Hair and taking 17 initial Charisma, because that saves you an entire feat, which is very useful. Um, in fact, this is one character I would say it is uh, a huge power spike to get Ethel's Hair on. I don't always... Um, make builds around that item, but for this character it will be a significant benefit, so you should definitely seriously consider trying to get it if you are playing this character. That being said, I'm going to build as though we don't have it, but it will power up your build significantly. For our skill selection here, we are going to make sure that we take Intimidation, and Perception is just always great to have. Every party needs it, so this gives us a pretty nice set of skill options, even though as a Barbarian we don't get a lot of skills. Um, if you're building this character as not Karlak, again, with a different uh, background, you could take as your background Guild Artisan, for example, to get Persuasion Proficiency and have multiple, um, multiple skill proficiencies, which is really useful as well. Another option actually would be to uh, take 17 Charisma and just grab Actor and get Deception Expertise um, at level 4 if that's something that you're interested in. I'm not going to do that for this build, but that is an option if you really just want more dialogue skills. Alright, that's it for level 1. Let's go on to level 2. I guess it's also worth noting that at level 1 you're just going to use a crossbow on the Nautilus to get through the Nautilus fight, because you have 14 dexterity, so that's fine. Having low strength as a Barbarian doesn't really matter for the Nautilus. At Barbarian level 2, uh, or at character level 2, we don't take Barbarian, in fact, we get to take Warlock. We want to get to Pact of the Blade as soon as possible to make use of our Charisma in melee, and also getting our first level of Warlock lets us use our 16 Charisma for Eldritch Blast. So at level 2, we're mostly going to be an Eldritch Blast user, like any other Warlock. We get, of course, to take Eldritch Blast as a cantrip, and for our second cantrip, we're going to take Blade Ward. The damage reduction from Blade Ward is pretty useful. While we will be getting damage reduction from Rage, this is still very helpful for um, or the early game, the Blade Ward damage reduction, and is still helpful in fights where you aren't raging to keep your Armor of Agathis alive. This character, of course, uses Armor of Agathis to do retaliation damage, and so have, doubling the effectiveness of Armor of Agathis with Blade Ward is worth a lot in terms of the amount of Armor of Agathis damage that you can output. For our subclass, uh, there are really two options, and they both, I think, can work. You can go with the Great Old One, because the additional Mortal Reminder critical hits are really good. But for this build, we're going to go with the Fiend. Um, and the reason for that is that the additional temporary hit points are really good, even if you have Armor of Agathis break or don't have it up, because you'll be doubling their effectiveness thanks to Bear Totem Rage, as well as the other damage reduction sources that we're going to get. So these will multiply significantly. Same as taking level 1 Barbarian, we get a lot of additional hit points from the Fiend temporary hit points, and we'll be killing stuff a lot, so it will trigger frequently. And also, the Fiend gets to take Command as a, a level 1 spell, which is a great thing to do on your first turn before entering a Rage. Command will work just fine as a warlock spell before you enter rage it's not concentration you can hit multiple enemies with it and prone enemies of course are vulnerable to attacks if you have haste or something to give yourself an extra action to attack with um 
And because this character has high charisma, you're just as good at using command as any other character to initiate fights with. It's an extremely powerful effect that's very worth doing. For our second spell, we're going to take Armor of Agathis, which is very important uh, for this character because we're going to be building around damage return. At Warlock level 2, we get to take our Eldritch Invocations, and you might think that there are other invocations that we're looking for on this character, but we don't need Armor of Shadows because we have the Barbarian Unarmored Defense, which is just as good anyways. We get uh, 13 base AC because we have 16 Constitution, so we don't need to cast Mage Armor. So we are going to take a very common set of... Eldritch Invocations for a Warlock, Agonizing Blast, and Devil Sight. Devil Sight lets us use Darkness and Eldritch Blast as an alternate option, so on fights where we don't want to rage and charge into melee, we can play just like a normal Warlock. If for whatever reason you want to play the fight at range, you have really good ranged options, which Barbarians normally don't get, other than throwing Barbarians, of course. And you get darkness, the Darkness and Devil Sight combo, meaning that you are as good as a normal Warlock at just spamming Eldritch Blasts from range, which is something that is very good to be doing. Agonizing Blast, of course, plays into this as well, because you can increase your um, your Eldritch Blast damage. It's also worth noting that you can Darkness in melee, and as long as you don't rage, you can keep up the Darkness and just get advantage on all your attacks, so there are some fights where that's the correct play as well. This character will change its strategy from fight to fight more than many characters, because you have so many different options available. For our spell selection here, we are going to take Hellish Rebuke, because Hellish Rebuke does retaliation damage, and importantly, because it's a reaction spell, this is a minor bug, but I don't feel bad uh, abusing it in this case because it's so thematic, you can use it while raging. Normally, you shouldn't be able to cast spells while raging, but in Baldur's Gate, reaction spells don't seem to check for that, and so you can make... Um, you can cast any spell that's cast as a reaction during rage, meaning that you can use Hellish Rebuke to do additional retaliation damage while raging. So in many combats, your enemies will tank damage from both your Armor of Agathis and your Hellish Rebuke if they hit you, taking a significant amount of return damage, and then of course you're also just hitting them with very powerful weapon attacks. At character level 4, we get to take our Warlock Pact Boon, and of course we're taking Pact of the Blade. This is still fundamentally a Barbarian build, so we want to be whacking things with our melee weapon, and that means that we need to use our Charisma for that. So that lets us use our Charisma for our Command and Eldritch Blasts, but also for our melee weapons. Um, up to this point, you've played mostly as a ranged character, but now you can really wade into melee with the best of them. For our level 2 spell selection, you really want to take Darkness here. It's just so important to have this spell on a Warlock, and um, even though you need to concentrate on it so you can't use it and rage in the same combat, there are fights where either of those two is really good. And of course, at this level, you won't have access to... Um, uh, you, you won't be raging a lot of the time just because Darkness and Eldritch Blast ab uh, abuse is so powerful. So that's something that you can just do as your default combat mode and be extremely happy all the time. Next level, we get to take a feat. And of course, we are going to take an ability improvement to boost our charisma up to 18. It's very important to increase our charisma so that we hit more often and so that our Eldritch Blast, when we use it, does more damage and hits more often as well. Note also at this level, because we're character level 5, even though we're only level 4 Warlock, we get our improved Eldritch Blast. So now we're firing two Eldritch Blasts. So when we shoot with an Eldritch Blast, it's going to be doing very good damage. Um, like I mentioned earlier, alternate options are you could have taken 17 charisma and pick up Actor at this level if you started with 17 Charisma. Or if you started with Ethel, Ethel's Hair, um, then you could... Uh, or if you started with 17 and got Ethel's Hair, you could be at 20 Charisma at this level, which would mean that we would already be finished maxing out our stats. For our cantrip selection here, you don't really need friends because you already have Thaumaturgy from Carlax Race and you get... Uh, very high, you're using your intimidation checks. Of course, if you're not playing Azariel Tiefling, then you might want to pick up friends to intimidate people anyways. And on this character, of course, we can pick up Mage Hand or Minor Illusion, um, both of which are very useful utility spells, or the ultimate utility of annoying people in the YouTube comments. We can also take as our spell selection, uh, we're looking for spells that don't have 
concentration requirements so that we can pre-cast them before combat, and there's actually one that's quite interesting for melee characters. Even though this character doesn't usually, or usually does want to get hit, you can control whether or not you're getting hit in fights very efficiently with this character because you have access to reckless attack and have access to not reckless attacking and casting mirror image. Mirror image is really good for this character because when you don't want to get hit, it doesn't require a concentration, so you can cast it and then enter rage. And that will allow you to um, maintain your HP pretty well on this character. So you have kind of your choice as with many of the fights that you're going into in this character, you have a modal option, or really a, a scaled option, anywhere from constantly take damage to deal back retaliation damage to take no damage because your AC is so high, uh, which is really an awesome way for this character to play. You can choose different strategic postures based on the situation that you find yourself in. Other than that, no decisions to make at Warlock level 4, so let's level up. And then we hit Warlock level 5 and get extra attack from the Deepened Pact of the Blade. This allows us to make multiple attacks, and uh, I really do like getting to level 5 Warlock pretty quickly on this build, so that's why we did it in this order. Because you want extra attack as soon as possible. Also, Warlock level 5 is just a huge power spike in general, just as a, as a character in general, because you get access to Hunger of Hadar, um, as well as some of the more awesome... Uh, some other awesome spells. Another thing that we can do is we can replace a spell if we find that there's a spell that we're not using from this list. Um, most likely that's going to be Hellish Rebuke, which uh, I think is very on flavor, but won't necessarily come up every time. But we can always take... Um, we can always replace one of these spells that we're not using and take Counterspell. Counterspell's not going to be as great on this character as it is for other characters because we're going to max out at level 3 spell slots, so we'll only be able to counter other level 3 spells uh, reliably because of how Counterspell works. But you can cast Counterspell because it's a reaction while raging. Even though that's a bug, um, you can do it. Uh, and it is very powerful to have Counterspell on a Barbarian, because that's just a very powerful thing to be able to do. This character also otherwise won't get too many reactions, um, so you will benefit from Counterspell. That being said, to keep things on flavor, I'm going to stick with just Hellish Rebuke, because I think that is really fun for the Retaliation build, so we're just going to go with that. And then for our Eldritch Invocation here, we're just going to take Repelling Blast. This, again, adds another different strategic option to the character. We can either be whacking things in melee or pushing things around with Repelling Blast, both of which are very powerful uh, uh, options for us. At this next character level, we're going back into Barbarian, so this will give us Reckless Attack, which is obviously awesome, because this will let us control whether we're getting hit even more reliably. Also, of course, it means we're making every attack with advantage, which is great in and of itself. Um, so, when you want to get hit to trigger your Armor of Agathis return damage, which at this level will be doing 15 return damage, or 30 if the enemy is wet, then you can activate Reckless Attack even if uh, before attacking, meaning that you will be able to decide to give enemies advantage against you. That will control the enemy aggro, because enemies decide whether what they're attacking based on how easy it is for them to hit. So if you use Reckless Attack, you can control whether they attack this character or not, meaning that you can force the retaliation damage. And then at Barbarian level 3, we get to go into Wild Heart Barbarian, and we get to take Bear Heart Barbarian, meaning that as we are forcing enemies to attack us and take retaliation damage, we are only taking half damage from it, in addition to other damage reduction sources that we might have that I'll talk about when we get to items. Bear Heart Barbarian is amazing for Armor of Agathis in particular, of course, because it will allow you to keep your Armor of Agathis up for longer, doing even more damage with every point of damage return. Um, and so your Armor of Agathis HP will survive twice as long when you have Bear Heart Barbarian damage reduction. That will let you do more and more retaliation damage, while also, of course, just getting the benefits of not dying because you're in Bear Heart Rage. 
at Barbarian level 4, we get another feat. And interestingly, I'm actually going to recommend not taking uh, plus 2 Charisma at this level. That's certainly a good option, but I think that you can actually do a little bit better. Because we are going to be making every melee attack with advantage, um, thanks to Reckless Attack, and uh, or darkness or various sources of, of advantage. And because we really do want to be hitting hard enough to threaten enemies into attacking us so that when they choose not to, because, you know, we're an armor of Agathis build, sometimes they won't attack us. And also we want our uh, opportunity attacks to be really powerful. I think that the best feat to take at this level is actually Great Weapon Master. You are going to want to combine this with gear that increases your hit chance, but because you have Reckless Attack, that basically offsets the negative attack penalty of Great Weapon Master, meaning that you're hitting kind of on par, um, and so you're just going to hit very reliably. This is why I mentioned that Ethel's Hair is so good for this build, because that will let us, if you use Ethel's Hair, that'll let you hit 20 Charisma and get Great Weapon Master, but if you aren't using it, I'm going to recommend taking Great Weapon Master over the, the Charisma, because I think it's actually more important to the build. At this next level, you may want to do a respec. The reason we took our levels in this order was to get our extra attack feature and our feats and our spells all online as quickly as possible to, to hit level 8 with all of our character features intact and then get the second feat at level 9. The downside of this leveling order is that on honor mode, the extra attack feature from Barbarian and Warlock do not stack. On Tactician or below, you're going to want to continue to get to hit the 5-5 split at level 10, because extra attack from Barbarian and the Warlock's Pact of the Blade extra attack stack on Tactician mode or below, giving you three attacks per round. So your final level split is going to want to include at least five levels of each of Barbarian and Warlock. On Honor mode, that's not true. They don't stack. And so we may want to end our level split with not a 5-5 a five -five split, because we don't need to hit extra attack from both classes. That said, on Honor mode, I still think you want to hit level 7 or level 8 Barbarian, and you still want to hit level 5 Warlock in order to get access to the third level spells, because I believe they're just really good anyways. Um, so while you could go for a 9-3 Barbarian Warlock split on Honor mode, or an 8-4 if you want an additional feat, um, I actually think I like the 7-5 split that we're going to end up with better anyways. So while I do want to mention the optional respec, just because the, the extra attack features don't stack on honor mode, I actually think that a 7-5 split is still good even without those stacking features because Hunger of Hadar is just that powerful. If that's something that you don't value though and you'd rather hit an extra feat, you can go for an 8-4 split. Or if you want to hit Brutal Critical, although personally I don't recommend that because it's not that much extra damage for us, you can go for a 9-3. But um, I think that the best... It, it, ending level split for honor mode is still 7-5, so I'm just going to continue the build without the respec, but at this level you may want a respec to hit for, to go for an 8-4 if you prefer the feat. That said, at Barbarian level 5, we get extra attack and we get fast movement, which are awesome. They give you uh, a third attack per round on Tactician or below, but also fast movement is just a really good feature for honor mode as well, and very powerful for this character. The fast movement allows you to enter combat and leave it much more easily, and also because we want to be triggering enemy opportunity attacks sometimes for... Uh, retaliation. This is going to let us trigger opportunity attacks from multiple enemies, and one play pattern for this character is to enter rage and then just walk next to every enemy in an encounter, eating their reactions, which will enable the rest of your party to operate more freely, and also the enemies are going to be taking retaliation damage because they're going to be hitting you uh, while you have armor of Agathis and other sources of retaliation like Hellish Rebuke up. So the fast movement is very helpful there. Three attacks per round on Tactician or below is obviously also an insane class feature that really you really do want to hit the 5-5 split for the Tactician levels. Then we go to Barbarian level 6 because that gets us an animal aspect. You could also do 5 Barbarian, 7 Warlock, but I think that once you've gotten 5 Warlock for Hunger of Hadar, you've gotten the best things out of Warlock anyways, so I'm going to recommend just going to level 7 Barbarian, which helps also fill a hole in this build, which we'll get to uh, next level. 
For our animal aspects, there are three choices, all of which I think are good in different circumstances. Elk is probably by, uh, by default the best. It's just five feet of extra movement speed for your entire party. Um, permanently, which is awesome. Just passively five feet of extra movement speed is really good. Uh, it doesn't sound like much, but it's very powerful. Also, if you have other sources of bleed, if you have sources of bleed, then which will include just the basic lacerate attack from your weapon, which most weapons uh, that you'll be using will have a short rest lacerate attack, you can take Aspect of the Beast Tiger, um, which uh, gives you your strength mod, uh, or sorry, uh, Aspect of the Beast uh, Wolverine, which lets you maim bleeding or poisoned targets. You can't use Tiger because we're not using strength, uh, but I, I confused myself there for a second. But you can take Wolverine to maim bleeding or poisoned targets. A character that's bleeding and maimed is trapped, meaning that they can be stuck in Hunger of Hadar, so if you're not raging, you can use Aspect of the Beast uh, Wolverine to trap enemies inside Hunger of Hadar, um, as long as you have the ability to inflict bleed on them. And that is just an extremely powerful additional tool that this character gets, uh, as well as just your normal combat expertise and the retaliation damage you get from Armor of Agathis. So we're, I, I recommend taking Wolverine, even if you don't have other sources of bleed, just the normal lacerate attacks from a halberd or greatsword or battle axe are going to be very useful for triggering bleed anyways. And there's lots of other ways to trigger bleed, so you will want to be looking for those on gear or on your other party members. Finally, at Barbarian level 7, we get Feral Instinct, giving us a plus 3 bonus to initiative, which is incredible. Three-fifths of the alert feat is awesome, meaning that we are now going to actually be winning initiative. One thing this character has been struggling with a little bit up to level 12 is that you only have 14 dexterity, so you, your initiatives are not great. And initiative is really good for this character, because you have command, you have... Um, uh, you want to be in rage before you get attacked, and you want to set up your defensive spells if you haven't precast them before you get attacked. So winning initiative is really good for this character, and Feral Instinct is just one of the best class features in the game, so definitely worth going for. If you went for the 8-4 split at this point, you could level up again in Barbarian, uh, get an extra feat, and... That feat could be alert, it could just be hitting 20 charisma if you aren't using Ethel's hair. Like I said, there's a lot of different flexibility you have with this character, but there are lots of different options to um, to make the most of it. This, it, I think, is by default the best if you aren't using the hair, though of course getting the hair lets you hit 20 charisma, which is excellent. When you put it all together, we have a character who is very good at control, has an excellent ranged damage option in Eldritch Blast just by default, has Hunger of Hadar, one of the most powerful effects in the game that stays relevant all the way through to the end game, attacks using their charisma, has great dialogue skills, and every time uh, an enemy attacks them, they're going to take minimum 15 return damage, plus they will only be taking half damage thanks to rage. We can power that up even further, though, with items, and there's a few items that are really excellent for this character. I'm going to actually go through several items, more than I usually do, because I think there's a lot of cool options that help you power up this character significantly. The first is the Bone Spike Garb. Bone Spike Garb just reduces damage by two, and enemies take three more retaliation damage, both of which are very powerful. Um, the temp 15 temporary hit points when you enter Rage is a good replacement if you're out of Armor of Agathis, uh slot, so that helps as well. And reducing damage by two when you're also having damage because of Bear Totem Rage is a really significant increase in your survivability and the survivability of your Armor of Agathis. So that's probably your best default um, item, but there's other uh, default armor, but there's other armors that are really good for us as well. Stuff like the Adamantine Scale Mail or other medium armors can be used to give you pretty high AC, as well as immunity to critical hits, reduction of incoming damage. Adamantine Scale Mail only reduces it by one, but still, that's very useful. Every little bit counts. And if you use a shield alongside that, you can hit 20 AC, which is really not that bad at all if you use a shield and a one-handed weapon, so there's definitely an option there. I recommend using a two-handed weapon to go with Great Weapon Master, though, and the two-handed weapon that I think is the best for this character, best in slot for your weapon, is the Skin Burster. The Skin Burster does, um, you gain Force Conduit whenever you deal damage, and Force Conduit is one of the broken stackable effects in this game, where you're, 
incoming damage is reduced, and this is flat damage reduction similar to the Bone Spike Garb reduction, uh, by the duration remaining of Force Conduit. That lets you stack even more damage reduction, up to a maximum, but you can have damage reduction in uh, that's comparable to an Abjuration Wizard, uh, while also just being a fully-fledged Warlock Barbarian. So you get kind of the best of all three worlds if you can hit frequently with the Skin Burster. Since we are making three attacks per round on Tactician or below, you also stack this up very quickly on those difficulty levels. Um, other good things to have around are Scrolls of Fire Shield, just very useful because you can add more retaliation damage. Another cool combo for this character is the Snowburst Ring, which whenever you deal cold damage, which you'll be doing frequently because of your Armor of Agathis return damage, makes an ice surface alongside any of the sets of boots like the Disintegrating Nightwalkers that stop you from falling over on ice. This means whenever an enemy hits you in melee, an ice surface will appear under them, or whenever an enemy hits you actually, an ice surface will appear under them and they'll fall over and that ice surface will have a save dc based on your charisma uh because you're a warlock and your charisma is very high so they're actually very likely to fall over so enemy hits you gets an ice surface under them and then they fall over which is incredibly powerful as well of course like all warlock builds the potent robe is just very good as well um you get additional temporary hit points you get more uh, damage on your eldritch blasts so definitely an option there other than that, you are looking for gear that increases your save DCs, gear that increases your chance to hit, and anything that gives you bleed damage, because that works very well with your aspect of the Wolverine, um, to paralyze enemies inside of your control spells. This character will also have a lot of different ways to initiate combats, and I'm just going to quickly walk through a couple of those. Depending on the different combats, you are going to want to choose many different possible combat postures, and so it's important to think about how you're going to start each combat before you start it. For example, one way to start combat is just to uh, initiate by... You know, you've cast Armor of Agathis on yourself, you enter Rage, and you go hit the enemies. That's the uh, great default, and it's just going to deal a lot of damage. Another way is to cast Command, which we're a level three war a level five Warlock, so we're going to have at least three enemies we can knock over with Command. And Command on three enemies is a great start to a combat. Then we can enter Rage and go get into melee contact with any of the enemies that isn't commanded, basically locking down four enemies at the beginning of a fight, preventing them from doing anything. Another way, if you don't want to use a Rage, is to enter, start a combat with Hunger of Hadar, just a very powerful effect, and you can stack that with other AoE spells from your party mates. And finally, another way, if you want to play a more ranged or defensive style for that fight, you can start off a combat by precasting Darkness, hiding in the darkness, and then using Eldritch Blasts as your main tool for that combat, um, doing just plenty of damage there. All of those are great options, and depending on which combats you're in, you'll want to take different ones. Definitely experiment with which strategies work best based on what kinds of enemies you face. Normally, against ranged enemies, you're going to want to use the Darkness and Eldritch Blast attacks, and against melee enemies, you're just going to want to go hit them. But um, there's a lot of nuance to that, and you'll see how it works as you go through each encounter in turn. But one of the great things about playing this character is how many different options you have for how you want to approach a combat, and so you can fit different strategies into different combats and into different parties as well. All right, my friends, hope you enjoyed this look at the Raging Retaliator. And as always, of course, if you have enjoyed the video, you can feel free to leave a comment uh, and like the video. Both of those things really do help me out a ton with the algorithm, so I appreciate it very much when people take the time to do that. And you can subscribe to my channel for more Baldur's Gate 3 build guides and other strategy game analysis. And if you've really enjoyed the content, you know, you can feel free to leave me some money uh, using the join channel member uh, buttons or super thanks buttons below the video. And of course, if you feel moved to do that, I appreciate it very much. All right, my friends, thank you so much, and I will catch you next time.